Hey, what's cracking everybody? Today I'm going to take a look at Rosa Linux. Rosa is a Russian based uh, distro and uh, their website is in Russian also. So I had to translate it into English, but uh, they released a new uh, point release, which is now 12.5 and I've gone ahead and downloaded it and I got it up in a virtual machine. I believe this is a Fedora based Red Hat based type system. I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to figure that out together. But uh, right here on the website, it says Rosa Fresh made for the home. And then it says right here, Rosa Fresh 12.5 is a modern domestic Linux operating system created by the community and legally available to everyone, completely free of charge and without registration. And it has some info about the source code and they got a link right here to get Rosa Fresh. And it also states right here on the website, the differences between 12.4 and the one that which we downloaded it, which is 12.5. So it says a new kernel 6.6 .6 with expanded support. It says a uh, NVIDIA 550 and Mesa 23.3.6 drivers for modern 3D graphics, support for auto partitioning and encrypted disks in the installer and TPM2 technology for storing encryption passwords in the computer's non-volatile memory. And radically expanded support for printers and scanners thanks to IPP-USB and SANE AirScan technologies. The repository has been redesigned to improve security and more than a thousand vulnerabilities have been closed. Support for advanced security settings and system auditing by installing sconfigs packages. User programs and repositories have been updated, most of them to the latest stable versions, an improved update checking system with the ability to, to flexibility. Wait a minute. An improved update checking system with the ability to flexibly set rights to update the system. Rosa update system, Rosa update system wheel, and Rosa update system no pass. The original utility for quickly launching ISO image and the QMU virtual machine is key move okay then you got some general principles of rosa linux release so uh, let's head on over to the virtual machine and uh let's get our rosa installed <music> Okay, we're here at the virtual machine and it is a plasma desktop and it's not plasma six, it's plasma five. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the uh, installer and it's starting install the hard drive. And there we go. And yes, it is the Anaconda installer. So I believe this is a Fedora based system. So we're auto automatically checked for English, United States. Click on continue. And there's a few items right here that I have to uh, fix before we can continue with the installation. So the first one is going to be installation destination. So I just have to make sure that it's blue with the check mark and then uh, automatic. Let it uh, do the automatic partitioning and click on done. So that should fix that. And it is. All right. Now the date and time is correct. Network and host name. It's already set up. So let's go to user creation. All right, give it a strong and complicated password. All right, that's done. And it says root account is disabled, but I could set it up. And we have some information here about license information. So just have to do an acceptance, click on done, and that should take care of that. All right, everything is now satisfied. So let's click on begin installation. All right, installation has begun. So uh, this process is going to take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So we'll pause the video. And when we come back, we'll be ready to reboot into Rosa Linux. All right, and the installation is now completed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, reboot system and reboot the system. So we can take a look at Rosa 12.5. And the system has rebooted. So let's go ahead and log in. Okay, and we are now logged in. And as you can see, Rosa Linux is using uh, KDE Plasma 5. So it's not the uh, Plasma 6 version, it's Plasma 5. And we got a little message about an update, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. And go to our notifications. I uh, don't see anything there. So, all right. And like I said earlier, I think this is a Fedora Red Hat based type system because it did use the uh, Anaconda installer. And usually uh, those type of systems use the Anaconda installer. All right, so, uh, Let's take a look over here at the application launcher and see what we find. Uh, our categories are favorites, 
all applications, internet, office, graphics, sound and video, tools, games, education, and sciences. All right. And then we have a couple pinned applications right here. We got a Dolphin, our file manager. We got Chromium, a web browser. And we got our workspaces or desktops, whatever you want to call them. Some people call them workspaces. Some people call them desktops. And then we also have our uh, system tray over here, which we have our uh, sleep. We have our calendar and clock. We have our uh, show hidden icons. We have networks, keyboard layout, uh, most recent device, volume, package, which I'm not sure what that is, uh, trash, and system settings. So let's open up the system settings and take a look at that real quick. So from the system settings, just a lot of things. You can pretty much uh, set up your entire uh, plasma system from here. So we have appearance, workspace, personalization, network, hardware, system administration, things like that. So right here in the appearance, we'll go ahead and click on that first just so we can take a look at it. And from right here, you can see we could change our application style, plasma style, colors, window decorations, fonts, icons, cursors, font manage, font management, and splash screen. So what I want to do right here is uh, we're on a light theme, as you can see from everything right now. And I want to change it to a dark theme just to make it easier on the eyes. So let me tell you, Rosa Dark. All right, that's uh, that's pretty cool. How about Breeze Dark? I think I like Breeze Dark better, so I'll leave it on that. Now let's take a look at some uh, application styles. I'll just leave it on whatever it's on. Plasma style, I always like to deal with ox oxygen. Just gives it a better look. All right, I'm satisfied with that. As far as colors, I'm good with that. Window decorations, I'm good with that. Fonts, I'm good with the fonts. Icons, I'm good with the icons. Cursor, I'm good with the cursor. All right, I'm pretty much good. Let's get out of appearance. All right, so next we got uh, workspaces. So let's take a look at workspace behavior. So right here, you got general behavior, and it tells you uh, you got visual behavior, display information, tool tips on mouse hover. So that's like every time I put my mouse over something, gives you the tool tips and things like that. It gives me a little info about it. So let me see if I turn it off and click on apply. Let's see what happens. Okay, now I don't get no tool tips. I don't get nothing, no information. All right, and actually, I kind of like that better for me as a personal setting. But uh, if you want to turn it on and off, you can do it from right here. And this display visual feedback for status changes. I'll turn that off. Uh, animation speed. I'll just make it instant. That way you uh using less resources. Clicking files or folders opens them. Single click on the installer. If this would have been click, it would have opened up just on one click. But just one click selects them. All right. And then click it in scroll bar track and then touch mode. So let me just click on apply for everything that I've changed so far. See if that sets into place. Sets it all in motion. My uh, there you go. Everything's working itself back into existence. It seems like we went to the end of the earth and uh, we're on our way back now. All right, so we got another section. It's called uh, desktop effects. I'm not too sure about in here. I've never played with it, so uh, you know. But I'm pretty sure there's more options like like what we just saw in general behavior that you can change right here. You got screen edges, so these are options you can set up with screen edges. And then you got touch screens, screen lock-in, virtual desktops, activities, and recent files. All right, and this is on your workspace behavior. Uh, what's hiding behind here? Oh, okay, let's go ahead and fix the whole wallpaper now. All right, so I guess we had to just have to wipe everything with an open program. <laughs> All right, then we got window management. So here you got a few uh, tabs of actions you can uh, create, and then you got uh, some more tabs over here. And that's in the window management. Then you got shortcuts. You can set up shortcuts, custom shortcuts. Then you got your startup and shutdown. So programs that you want to auto start, you can set them up here. Then you also got background services, desktop section and task scheduler. All right. And then you got search. So you got file search and you got plasma search. Then next you got personalization. So you got your notification settings right here. Right now it's enabled, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for right now. 
And then it'll still show me critical notifications, things like that. So I'll leave that alone. And then let me go ahead and apply it. All right, then users right here. You can manage your user information. You got regional settings, accessibility, applications, date and time, KDE wallet, and online accounts. And that's all under personalization. Then under that, we got our network. Network has our connections. So if you needed to set up a wireless connection or a plugged in connection, you do it all from here. Then you also got some settings right here. So you got proxy, connection preferences, SSL preferences, cookies, and window shares. And that's under network. Then you got your hardware. Hardware is your input devices, your mouse, keyboard, things like that. You can change layouts, get advanced features. And that's just for the keyboard. You also got a section for the mouse. You got game controllers and touchpad. All right. Then you also have display and monitor. So if you need to change the display size and, you know, set your hertz up and all that, you do it here. You got your compositor settings. Gamma. I've never played with gamma, so I'll just leave that alone. And then you got setting here for night color. I've never played with that either, so I'll just skip it. Then you got your audio tools. So here, basic, simple audio right here. So you got more buttons right here where you can configure it, more uh, details, but uh, I'm not going to mess with it. Then you got your power management. So if you're on the laptop and plugged in, get all your settings in order. Then you got your activity power settings and advanced power settings. Then you also have Bluetooth options. So if you had a Bluetooth enabled device, then you would set it up here. Same thing goes for printers and removable storage. All right, then you have your system administration. So right here, you got your quick about about your system, rolls a fresh desktop, gives you your KDE Plasma version, your Framework version, your QT version, your kernel version, and your graphics platform. In this case, we're on XORG or X11, whatever you want to call it. You also got your processor, memory, graphics, and other info right here. Then right here, I don't see no info right here because so, it needs authentication. I'm just going ahead and cancel that because I'm not sure what it does. Then you got your authentication, cancel, hardware configuration. I'll just cancel. And then manage user on system. I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to cancel all these. I don't need to get in there. I don't need to touch anything. All right. And these are your system settings. All right. So we see we got Chromium right here. Let's open up Chromium. And let's see if we can take a look and uh, check out the about on Chromium. And this is Chromium 122.0.6261.128. I'm not a Chrome or Chromium user, so I, I'm not sure if that is the latest and greatest or what. But for those of you that do know, there's your info right there. All right. And then we got Dolphin, which is our file manager standard on uh, Plasma. Pretty much all Plasma systems use Dolphin, unless it's changed up. And on the about, it is version 23.08.4. All right, let's get into our menu right here. Let's take a look at our terminal. And you see, it's not NeoFetch, but it's something similar. And it gives us just a big old Rosa. And let's see if we got HTOP installed. And we do. So let's go ahead and make this bigger. You can see right now we're only using 990 megabytes out of 4 gigabytes. And our load averages are 0 0.66, 0 0.60, and 0 0.36. All right, now let's do a NeoFetch. Ah, NeoFetch is not installed, so we'll do a sudo DNF install NeoFetch. I like that it actually gives you the command so you can go ahead and uh, paste it in and get it going. It's not bad. All right, give it my confirmation. This should take uh, less than a minute, so we'll take a look at it. And it's done. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. And let's do a Neo Fetch again. And there you go. And there you go. Rosa Fresh Desktop 12.5. Platform 2021.1 and the kernel it is 6.6 .6, so it's not the latest but it is pretty updated and you got your desktop environment window manager theme icons terminal CPU GPU and your memory all right all right so yeah it's pretty good 
It's Rosa Linux. It's a Russian based system. It uses a KDE Plasma 5. Uh, it is Fedora, uh, Red Hat based. So, uh, yeah, works pretty good. Everything works out the box. Everything's working great. It looks pretty good. So, uh, no complaints here. All right. That's going to do it for this video. Just want to take a quick look at Rosa Linux. Uh, if it's something that you're interested in, you know, go take a look at it and download it. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for me. And I'm out. Thank you.